We went to Japan. By we, I mean Naoto we. and I. Well, he's been to Japan many times. You're Japanese, oh, right? Almost like, yeah, yeah, almost like that, yeah. Naoto and I just got back from Japan mm, a month or two ago. During the pandemic, we uh, made contacts with lots of new blacksmiths, started bringing us some really exciting new stuff. So we really wanted to be there to meet them as soon as the restrictions lifted. We were able to. So the first stop. Right. We land, and the first stop we went up north. Nigara. Nigara, Nigara Hamono, located in Hirosaki City in Aomori Prefecture. We flew into Aomori and drove to uh, see Go Yoshizawa-san, who is the, basically the head blacksmith of the Nigara Hamono. Nigara Hamono has been around for quite a, quite a while. They, yeah. they have this like sword making history. Mm -hmm. And this uh, young Go Yoshizawa-san took it over and brought it to kind of next level. And so we went to visit. They do have such fantastic workshop with actually quite mm -hmm. a few uh, apprentices and workers there. He's got right? an interesting vision for the future of blacksmithing mm. in his region. He he's actively trying to build it to become a stronger business, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Training young folks to then go on and train other people to continue the craft of mm. blacksmithing in that area. Absolutely. When I first spoken to him, he only had a two workers or apprentices. And when we actually went to visit, there were five. Yeah, there were, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Five young guys working side by side. It had really great atmosphere and they communicate each other in a way that they, uh, they try to improve um, like every step of the way. I think possibly it's because uh, Yoshizawa-san really just wants to make some really cool Damascus. Like he, he showed us, he did a little demo of this ridiculous handcrafted Damascus he was making. But I think he also recognizes he needs someone there to to make knives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he's got a really good idea behind business, plus he wants to just make really cool stuff. Where do we go next? We went down to Tsubame Sanjo in Niigata, mm. where we actually met a, quite a few blacksmiths and knife a pretty makers. pretty good region, yeah. It's a well-known region for knife making, as well as like steel manufacturing. Steel, yeah. yeah. So who did we see? Tadafusa. First stop, Tadafusa. Tadafusa is this knife maker who makes a lot of actually knives, and hybriding, I guess, like hybrid of the lot of handmade and very efficient uh, machine made. It's fun to, to have and see and use handmade knives. Mm -hmm. And it seems it makes the factory knife almost like a second class. Mm -hmm. But when you go to the Tatafusa place, it's really hard to walk away and say that's a factory exactly. made knife. Man, they're so good at what they do and mm. so hands on. Yeah, like every yeah. step, there is like it actually the hands on doing yeah. stuff, right? No, they're really, really great. I was pretty amazed how handmade that our uh, Hocho Kobo is. Yeah. Right? It's, like it's incredible. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have this uh, mindset of a factory made knives being just like put in a machine and does everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we did actually go th that afternoon we, after eating some really good ramen, right? Mm -hmm. oh, we yeah. went and saw Hinora-san. Right, right. Wow, this guy's a legend, right? Mm -hmm. Big contrast, like Hinora-san's factory, we actually saw a Hinora senior, uh, Tsukasa-san and a Mutsumi-san his son working side by side together. They are really, really hands-on blacksmiths and do pretty much all the steps by themselves. Well, they're known for some knives that are verging on a sculpture as well as a tool mm -hmm. and incredibly skilled, incredibly sought after and very hard to come by. Mm -hmm. So nice contrast to a, a place that does some really awesome quality production mm -hmm. to someone that's almost like an artist. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, where do we go the next day? We went to see Tojiro. Right. Tojiro is this a little bit more mass produced, slightly more technologically basically advanced in terms of like use of machine than the Tadahusa. So mm -hmm. they do produce quite a bit more knives yeah. and they do look a little bit more like an interesting look. But the, uh, the performance though, it's like fantastic. You know, I was just at one of the local cooking schools and mm -hmm. one of the chefs there said to me, he said, this is the best knife for a cooking school student mm -hmm. because it's so sharp and it works so well, mm -hmm. but no one wants to steal it because it doesn't right. look like anything special. Exactly, right? And I thought that was a really great way of putting it. But still though, like we actually get to interview one of the workers at the uh, workshop and it's still lots of hands involved. It's like so amazing, right? Mm -hmm. the, uh, how people are actually sitting in front of this machine, the wheel's spinning, but it's still a man and woman doing all the works by hand. 
Well, and more women in that factory than most, right? Mm. And, and it's neat that they have, over the last few years, branched somewhat. Mm -hmm. So they've got their core factory side, mm -hmm. but they've also got the Tojiro Atelier, where they're doing hand forging of knives, mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, led by, by Tomo-san, mm -hmm. right? And he's a very awesome guy, and, but also our friend Sayaka, mm -hmm. who is one of the only female blacksmiths in the world, mm -hmm. if not the only female Japanese blacksmith. Probably the biggest business that we saw was Tojiro. Probably, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So, absolutely. Uh, a great stop on the road. Then we ate eel. That was the day we had that crazy oh. good eel mm -hmm. for lunch. Then we went to, like another contrast, went to uh, see a Wakui-san. That's right. One person game, mm -hmm. and his workshop is like in the middle of residential area. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, it looks like an old house. And it went, once you get it in, you see all those like machineries in this tiny, Tiny, like, oh, oh yeah, it's like being in your grandfather's shed, but except your great, 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 great grandfather's <laughs> work shed, there are so many things that have been there for a hundred mm. years. They're so old, yeah. right? It's super cool, definite contrast. Absolutely. Hopefully we'll get his knives for Small Makers Month in August. August, awesome, that's gonna be great. We saw Wakui. Mm -hmm. And we saw a uh, Mazaki-san as Mazaki, well. Mazaki, yeah, that's right. He was in the same sort of neighborhood. Yeah, though the um, he is in the same sort of neighborhood as the other knife makers. Wakui-san is in this residential area, yeah, right? So also another good contrast. Mazaki-san, when he started his own workshop, he found a space that's big enough for him. Right? Well, and he's a really unique sharpener too. And I think it was cool to learn that he uses the big mechanical, like large wheel. Mm -hmm. He only uses one tool like that, and that's for the initial grinding. The rest he's doing by hand. Yeah, that's crazy. That right? He, the way he sharpens makes the bevel really nice and even. There will be no high or low spots for the bevel so that when the customer is using the knife, it's much easier to sharpen them. Yeah, he's really thinking with the end user in mind and what it's gonna be like for them to use this knife and care for it mm -hmm. forever. So part of the sharpening process is part of that, right? So he's actually built that into the knife. Uh, Super cool. Absolutely. Then we spend the whole day with the massage stand next day. Yeah, that was fun. He is actually producing two new lines right. in a part of training his apprentices. Yeah, that's cool. He wants them to progress. So exactly. he's changing the knives that he's making. Exactly. He, awesome. he wants them to do a little bit more work, but making it better. He wants to make sure the products that he's putting out as the Masashi Kobo is good mm -hmm. and better than ever. What is he, 17th generation blacksmith? But he's talking about all of the metallurgy at a microscopic level. Mm. He's got graphs of ions and electrons and science words that mean stuff about steel. No, he's so good. And then we cut ham. The, he's got two knives in front of us and we get to cut the same piece of meat. Those two knives are sharpened by him and one's got a little bit more coarser teeth and the other one was a little bit more smoother teeth. Mm -hmm. And a little bit more coarser or the uh, toothier teeth mm -hmm. gave a little bit more richer umami. It's got the yeah, ba basically so breaks cool. that, that little cell and opens up whole yeah, that was uh, flavor amazing. out. Like right? He's looked at the result of the ham that he sliced with the knife of different sharpness level, mm -hmm. so coarseness of the stone that he finished with. And he said that when you look at it under a microscope, the one that was really fine goes between the cells. But the coarse one cuts the cells open, so we were getting more of the salt out of the cured meat. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was absolutely mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Yeah. Another great thing about the uh, massage son is that we are... We're hosting him. We're hosting him. Yeah. We're bringing Masashi Yamamoto-san from Sanjo Niigata to Canada this summer. He will be able to engrave your knives right in front of your eyes if you get his knives. So Masashi, we're always excited to see him. He's visited before. He's such a fun guy to hang out with. He wants to host events in the stores. I think we'll do it in Vancouver and Ottawa where he wants to really nerd out with chefs or industry folks or anybody who's really interested about knives and how they affect food. So stay tuned, look for that, it'll be fun. Uh, and we also did an Instagram Live with a really talented young guy, Nakagawa-san in Sakai region. Yeah. That was our next stop. We got to actually see him in person. Finally, he is one of the 
probably one of the most talented blacksmith in that region. Mm -hmm. The a uh, lot of blacksmith in that region just really focuses on one or two different type of steels mm -hmm. that they are really good at. He makes the uh, white carbon steel, blue carbon steel, um, Ginsan, Ginsan VG10, VG10, yeah, and honyaki. he does honyaki mm -hmm. in every sort of stuff. So he's super, super good. That guy moves so fast and so organized. Wow, he was so impressive. And when you look at his knives, Jesus, amazing. We actually saw a few blacksmiths in that region, right? The mm -hmm. uh, next one was the uh, Yoshikazu Tanaka-san's workshop. Yeah, that was a crazy shop too. Yeah, the it's like one of the oldest. I would say probably exactly the same size as the lot that the house is on, not mm -hmm. big. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, he, you know, his, his, his side door for his house is here and the entrance for his workshop is here. And that's where he goes back and forth every day mm -hmm. for 50 years. He's also really talented, but he's so in the believer of the Hitachi carbon steel. So mm -hmm. he only forges the uh, carbon steel from the Hitachi. Well, I think after 50 years, you narrow it down to what you're good at and that's all he does. And he makes knives, other people put handles on them, other people grind them down. He hammers out knives by hand, carbon steel. By bare hand. By bare hand. By bare hand. Wait till you see the video for that. That's one you're definitely gonna wanna catch. It's an intense workshop. He's worked there for 50 years. His father worked there for 50 years before. There is knives and steel and soot and ash and charcoal and it's everywhere. It's a pretty intense place. Yeah. And we went to see another very talented blacksmith and also the- Okay, uh, we only go and see talented blacksmiths. I guess. We, so we only, when we went, we made a list of who we were gonna see, we put a list of like talented blacksmiths. <laughs> Let's go there. <laughs> so who do we go see after? So we went to see Doi-san and oh. the Yamatsuka-san's workshop. Yeah, they are talented. Yeah. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's worth saying they're talented. Yeah. Doi-san is the son of this legend blacksmith. Actually the family, legend of family uh, mm -hmm. blacksmith. Keijiro Doi and even his uh, grandfather the, was super mm -hmm. talented blacksmith, right? So it comes from the, this lineage of the family of blacksmiths. He makes the Sakai Takayuki Homura series. And he started making the double bevel knives and it's like it's such an incredible uh, blacksmith. Great thing that we actually saw at Doi-san's workshop is that the, uh, there is a uh, one young guy, mm -hmm. apprentice working for him. It's been incredible actually to see those young guys working at those uh, workshops and blacksmith shops that can pass the torch down to them. It was people. really encouraging to see that because mm -hmm. they're not just the son of the, of the maker. Mm -hmm. They're young mm -hmm. folks who are really interested in becoming blacksmiths. Mm -hmm. They're choosing to become blacksmiths. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really interesting. I think that shows a lot of great spirit mm -hmm. and uh, a great potential for the future of Japanese blacksmithing. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And we get to actually see the, uh, the sharpener who works out from the same kind of building, the workshop, right? The Yamatsuka family. The reason why I say Yamatsuka family, the Mitsu Yamatsuka-san is a head sharpener of the Yamatsuka Hamono, the uh, Yamatsuka uh, family, but the uh, whole family is in the sharpening business. Two of his sons and the one daughter. Yeah, that was And a cool. uh, mother, like yeah. the wife. Yeah, they all work together and they sharpen Doi's knives and other people's knives. Other people's yeah. knives, but the yeah. uh, Doi's knives too. The, yeah. uh, it, was, it was incredible to see. We actually get to interview Yamatsuka-san mm -hmm. and the, his son. Yeah. He, like his son is usually really shy and doesn't want to be in front of camera, mm -hmm. but we actually get to, you know, drag him and put him in yeah, the camera. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, put him was, on the spot. Yeah. And you know what? I also got to sharpen a doi. You also are getting to sharpen a doi because mm -hmm. Doi-san gave us two knife blanks. Knives that he had hammered out and forged, and they were just a solid piece of steel. And we have since worked on them. I've only screwed mine up three times since I started. Okay, four times, but this is a really incredible challenge. Naoto's doing a much better job. This is the, uh, this is yeah, how it comes. Go. This is a basically blank that we, uh, we're getting. Uh, I don't get to work on this knife every day, so I'm just doing a straightening process. Mm -hmm. It is so complex. There's the whole part where you hammer the steel and you put it in the fire and you make it hot and you cool it down and you make all of the things happen on the inside of the steel that you, you create this this, the backbone of the knife. And then it goes into this whole other stage of grinding it down, straightening it out, shaping that, the bevel, creating the sharpness. It's incredibly complex. 
and it's very difficult to do. And that's why, especially in the Sakai region, we have blacksmiths who make knives, and then that knife gets handed to a sharpener who does the grinding. So they're very specialized, exactly. very specialized in their process, yeah. yeah. We also saw a, a very unique craft that people don't usually get to see, handle maker. Mm -hmm. the, uh, we actually went to see, because as the Michael was saying, blacksmith forges the blade, sharpener puts the edge on the knife, then there is a handle maker in that same region makes a whole bunch of handles. And the handle workshop was crazy. That would not be legal in, in, in our country. No. <laughs> you would not be able to work with the table saw blade spinning with nothing around it. Not a single piece of safety anywhere in this place. They sat on stools on the floor, Sharp objects would spin and they would hold tiny sticks that were to become handles against these sharp blades and chunks of wood would fly everywhere. Yeah. It was crazy. It was a little bit crazy. <laughs> we have seen some other um, handle makers before as well. That was, I don't want to say it's a primitive, but it's very limited um, machinery. <laughs> the most limited machinery that I've seen for uh, handle makers. Yeah, I feel like it was uh, probably what it was like when they very first started using power tools. Mm. <laughs> and they have the same power tools. They're basically shaping the handles using CNC machines, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Almost like a robot's making the thing. Right. And there was no robots anywhere near this. It was really kind of cool to Although see. Although those craftsmen work in there uh, for probably over you know, half century, they're yeah. like a robot. They're getting into yeah, robot yeah, phase, yeah. yeah. And uh, they were not young and they pumped them out. Yeah. They were fast. Yeah. yeah, it was really cool. I love getting to go to Japan. I love getting to see things from the other side and really getting to see the faces of the, mm. the people that you know the names of. I think knowing the name of somebody who's made anything that you own is so rare and getting to go and see them. I think we're so lucky we get to do that. Yeah. Uh, so that's why we're doing these videos. We want to show them to you. Uh, so you get to know, know your maker. Yeah. Meet your maker? No, that's a different thing. We also went to see a uh, Maruyama-san from Hado. Oh, right, it was, yeah. It was great. The, uh, he is uh, such a great sharpener uh, for Hado knives. He is relatively young. He hasn't worked for the kitchen knife sharpening industry as long as, say, Matsuka-san. Mm -hmm. But because of that, he's very innovative and he's open to new ideas. Mm -hmm. We just got one of the... Uh, his new, not new knives, but the way he sharpens, he improves it every Is there a batch. dot on one of the boxes? Maybe, maybe. When I have we to were there, Naoto forward. was so excited about these knives, he, he was holding one and said, this one, because <laughs> often they feel slightly different. And Naoto said, would you please put a tiny little dot on this box? And I think he's gone home and asked his wife if he's allowed to buy another knife, because I'm pretty sure he fell in love with that knife. Each batch that we get from them. Mm -hmm. This mine and the, how the knife should work, he just puts that into the uh, uh, puts that into the actual knife making and uh, this batch of knives is very exciting. Anyways, it was it was great time. We actually ate quite good things mm -hmm. with the uh, in Sakai as well. So yeah, in Sakai, we went for this amazing sushi dinner. Very traditional, very nice place. Uh, we sat at the counter in front of the fridge with the fish, the chef and his apprentice cutting, placing the food to, in front of us. Very traditional, there's no menu, it was that omakase style mm -hmm. where basically uh, the only question they ask you is, tell me, you know, would you like me to stop feeding you? And uh, man, the food is exceptional. And we got to eat something that I, f I find quite strange. And it was a tiny little dish of tiny little fish. Not that strange but the part where they were still alive. What an incredible meal. Yes. Sakai is an incredible region, mm. not only for blacksmithing, it's got the large city of Osaka, the second largest city in mm. Japan, uh, bustling metropolis, uh, very cool place, very different style from a lot of the other places I noticed in Japan, right. uh, and very cool. On our way back to Tokyo, we took a little side trip. Mm -hmm. We went to this prefecture called Wakayama. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually get some stuff from this prefecture. Yep. We get really excellent, Kishu Bincho Tan, which is a really special charcoal. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be get some, going to be getting some soy sauce that we uh, found while we were there, and uh, we ate some fun stuff. And we saw yeah. some cool things. Have you been to Wakayama before? 
I then yeah, so that's where I'm from. Wakayama is like famous for the uh, these pickled plums too. Mm -hmm. Sweet, salty, and sour. A sour. Yeah, these are neat. I tried to get a bunch of different ones. When I did the translation using Google Translate, mm -hmm. the image said good driving snack. Mm. They're salty and they're crunchy. Mm -hmm. This one, soaked in brandy. A little boozy to be honest. Mm. And I think this one is a bit of honey, but it's softer. It's more like what I would think is the regular kind. Right, right. Right? Uh, and then this one, you should try this one. Mm. It's very dehydrated. It's like a raisin. Right. So it's intense. The flavor is intense and right. it's actually quite sweet. Yeah, let's eat some. This is like halfway to being like a dried apricot. Mm. It's very similar though, right? Mm -hmm. Apricot, uh, plums. Mm -hmm. Nothing to see here. There's a party in your mouth. Mm, that, that one's really good. The dried one? Yeah. So good, hey? So we... Uh, I would suggest doing exactly what we did. If mm -hmm. you ever go to visit, is give yourself a day or two mm -hmm. in Tokyo before you leave. And then step one, buy a suitcase or a duffel bag. <laughs> step two, go to Tsukiji Market. Mm -hmm. Step three, go to Kapabashi, mm -hmm. fill suitcase, send it home on the airplane with you. There's so many great things to buy there. Yeah. Food stuff, kitchen stuff. Mm -hmm. There's, I mean, what else is there to buy? Food stuff and kitchen stuff. <laughs> Nothing else is important, right. right? Right. Small Makers Month is coming up where you're gonna see some of the cool knives. Mm -hmm. Masashi is coming with some new knives. Two brand new lines that we'll carry all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's gonna come to visit us here in Canada. All kinds of great stuff coming up. Stay tuned on that and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. <laughs>